Panama City, Panama, and I can't wait to show you the Panama Canal, as well as a lot of other neat things in the city, including Old Town. So we're gonna go and have a look. Casco Viejo, also known as Casco Antiguo or San Felipe, is the historic district of Panama City and was completed and settled in 1673 and built following the near destruction of the original Panama Viejo just two years earlier which was attacked by pirates. Here you'll find great restaurants, bars, and shops. And this is also where the government offices for Panama are, as well as the President's Palace. Panama uses the U.S. dollar as their currency. So if you're traveling here from the United States, you don't have to worry about converting currency and ATMs are easy to find if you need to withdraw money. I'm sitting in the Plaza de la Independencia, if I said that correct. And of course, over here to the side is the Cathedral of Panama City. Um, this is all Costco Viejo. This part of the city has a really neat vibe to it and that's probably what makes it my favorite part of the city. Casco Viejo was included as a World Heritage Site of UNESCO in 1997. This is the convent of Santo Domingo built in 1678. It was ravaged by two fires in the 17th century which toppled the towers and the interiors. However, the walls and arches still stand. As the tide rolls in, this area gets covered with water. I'm at the seawall here in Costco Viejo. So Costco Viejo is right over here, which is Old Town. Uh, then over here you have the ocean and an interstate that goes right past. And of course with the ocean breeze right here, it feels amazing because Panama can get very hot. The year-round average low temperatures are about 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius, and the year-round average highs are around 92 degrees Fahrenheit or 33 degrees Celsius. But the humidity average is 86%, making it feel hotter than it actually is. the chicken burrito here at Tantalo's and Tantalo's is a restaurant but also has a rooftop bar as well and we'll show you the rooftop bar later on but for now it's lunch time let's eat
Santalos is a hotel, restaurant, and rooftop bar. I have never stayed in the hotel, so I can't speak on that, but I have frequented their restaurant and rooftop bar on numerous occasions, and both are fantastic. If you're looking for nightlife, then Costco Viejo has it. You'll find live music along with great food and drinks. As mentioned earlier, here is Tantalo's Rooftop Bar. There are numerous rooftop bars in Costco Viejo, including Salvaje and Gato Blanco. The nightlife is exceptional in Costco Viejo, and while Chupito's 507 isn't a rooftop bar, it is definitely worth going to see all of their flaming drinks they are known for. Miraflores Locks here at the Panama Canal and this Maersk freighter ship behind me is getting ready to pull up here. It's going to be lowered 27 feet by the lock system so that it can continue on its journey through the canal. The Panama Canal, also known as the Miraflores Locks, is an artificial 51-mile waterway in Panama that connects the Atlantic Ocean with the Pacific Ocean. The canal cuts across the Isthmus of Panama and allows ships to pass. More than 800,000 ships pass through the canal each year. The canal is a feat of engineering and you really have to see the locks operate in person to truly appreciate it. The canal became a shortcut that greatly reduced the time for ships to travel between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, enabling them to avoid the lengthy, hazardous Cape Horn route around the southernmost tip of South America. Here at the Visitor Center, you'll be able to watch ships pass through the lock system, as well as see an interactive museum and souvenir shop. Because Panama City is a tropical climate with nearby rainforest, it gets quite a bit of rainfall each year. The rain season is predominantly April through December, and sometimes the rain is a short-lived rain that lasts 30 minutes or so and quickly dries up, but other times it can last hours. One thing to keep in mind when traveling to Panama are the storms. Sometimes it will come out of nowhere, and when it storms here, it storms. Right now, I'm stuck in this place because the rain is just non-stop. It's lightning, it's thundering, it's pretty bad. But I found this cool street food place. I'm about to go to get some shrimp and some drinks. I'm just kind of relax here and hopefully wait out until the storm goes by. Our cameraman Calvin got stuck in one of Panama's many downpours, but luckily he was able to seek refuge at Maisa, a small seafood and street food restaurant nestled amongst little shops filled with local souvenirs. Este es un buen lugar para comer ceviche en el casco viejo. Estamos situados acá, vendemos ceviches, eh, pescado, a la maiza, eh, al ajillo, al ajillo con patacones, papas fritas. Este es un buen lugar en familia. Es un buen lugar para pasarla bien. Y estamos de martes a, a domingo en el, acá en el casco, en el casco viejo. Y se pueden pasar cuando quieran para pasar un buen momento en, en familia. <laughs> yeah. Sure, the rains of Panama could derail your plans, or you could use them as a reminder to slow down and have a drink with friends.
Speaking of shelter from the rain, some of our crews stayed at one of Panama City's many hostels. These low-cost hotel alternatives cater largely to millennials, and their chic common areas are a great place to meet fellow adventurers. The 66-story Hard Rock Hotel Panama Megapolis, Radisson Decapolis, and Hotel Las Americas Golden Tower are located next to the Multicentro Mall, which is where many foreigners find themselves congregating here in Panama City. There are many sports bar style restaurants in Multicentro, and this entire area is a very clean and nice area. We ended up choosing Tumbao Restaurant and Malta Centro after looking at the menu options. Our waitress was Neymar who was very friendly and was very attentive. I'm here with Neymar and I'm getting ready to have a, uh, di a steak dish with uh, fries. And uh, Neyma, what is the name of the place? El Restaurante Tumbao. Por acá de los esperamos. Tenemos delicias de comidas y de bebidas. Por acá son bienvenidos. Welcome. My job is to promote tourism and the businesses that rely on tourism. But my job is also to guide you on great places to go and the tips for getting there, and I would be doing you an injustice if I didn't tell you to avoid taxis in Panama City at all costs. The taxis in Panama City do not use meters. They simply tell you a price. If you look like a gringo, you're probably going to get gringo pricing. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm a fan of the rideshare services such as Uber and Lyft. An Uber will cost you three to four dollars to go most places in Panama City, whereas a taxi will typically be ten to twenty dollars and is entirely negotiable with a taxi driver. But keep in mind that Ubers are safer than taxis because your Uber app logs you getting into the Uber, which is never the case with a taxi. Only you and the driver know you got into a taxi. Save your money in the frustration of negotiating with a taxi driver and just do the Uber. We're getting ready to walk up the hill to Ancon, which is supposedly this beautiful scenic point. Uh, it's the highest point in Panama City. So uh, we were told cars aren't allowed to drive up there anymore. So now it's a 20 minute walk for us to get up there. So we'll let you know. You can buy drinks and snacks at Tropical Boho Nest which is at the foot of Ancon Hill and is operated out of a family's house. Ancon Hill is a 654-foot hill that overlooks Panama City adjacent to the township of Ancon. Ancon Hill is mostly undeveloped and the hill is the highest point in Panama City. It is more of a reserve or park, and the summit can be reached by a 20 to 30 minute hike on a paved road. The road has been closed to cars, so if you want to see it, you're going to have to walk it like we did. The views over the city from the top are spectacular, and you'll most certainly see some unique wildlife along the way. You just caught a glimpse of a capybara. This is a mammal native to South America and is the largest living rodent in the world. It is a close relative to the guinea pig and the chinchilla. 
This caterpillar is a perfect example of the unique creatures found in Panama. We finally made it to the top of Ancon here in Panama City and the Uber driver told us it would take about 20 minutes to walk it. The thing you need to know about me is that I walk really fast, faster than probably anybody else I know, and it took me 29 minutes. I will say this, the view is amazing, but uh, it's definitely a haul and uh, this would be the one day that I did not wear a sweat wicking shirt so you can see I'm just covered in sweat getting up here. Fenicia is a Lebanese, Mediterranean, sushi, Middle Eastern, and vegetarian restaurant all rolled into one. The food is fantastic and is probably my favorite restaurant in the downtown area of Panama City. Their menu looks like a magazine. I mean seriously. It has that many pages as well. It is possibly the biggest menu selection I have ever seen a restaurant have. I have personally had their steak, their lasagna, and several other entrees. And as you can see, tonight is sushi. They have a great selection of fusion sushi options too. Did you know the most expensive coffee on earth is called Panama Geisha? It sells for as much as $600 per pound. We wanted to try a cup at Casa Sucre Coffee House in Casco Viejo, which cost us $9 for a small pour over cup. It is a stout coffee similar to an espresso, but very smooth and rich. La Iglesia del Carmen is a beautiful Gothic Catholic church located in the heart of Panama City on Via España in the middle of the financial district close to the metro station amidst the skyscrapers of the city. The church was built by the congregation of the Carmelites who immigrated to Panama in the 1940s beginning construction in 1947 and opening on July 16, 1953. I'm at Taco Tea in Panama City, and this is an authentic Mexican restaurant here located in Panama. And I'm getting ready to have three different tacos. Uh, this place is, uh, the food looks great, and when we walked in the door, it smelt amazing. So I'll let you know how it is. Taco Tea is a Mexican taqueria or taco restaurant. They have a vast array of different tacos on their menu. I've never seen so many options for tacos before. Best of all, they are all amazingly inexpensive. Oh, and after having them, they are delicious. This is definitely a new place on my list.
we're at the Bio Museo here in Panama City, and uh, this museum, the building is very colorful. It's uh, basically just very bright colors throughout the whole thing. Uh, the displays throughout this museum are amazing. Um, they've given us a little controller so we can actually listen and uh, to each of the displays. Uh, but this museum covers the biodiversity of Panama and basically discusses even about the separation of the uh, two bodies of water. So I'm going to go check it out. Bio Museo is a museum focused on the natural history of Panama and how the Isthmus of Panama changed the world. The museum is located in Amador, also known as the Causeway, and you can get to it by Uber, taxi, or bus. The building was designed by renowned architect Frank Gehry, and this was his first design ever for Latin America. Gehry is also known for the Guggenheim in Spain, the Walt Disney Concert Hall in Los Angeles, and numerous other famous architectural wonders. The Bio Museo has eight galleries for its permanent exhibits, which include the Gallery of Biodiversity, Panama Rama, Building the Bridge, Worlds Collide, The Human Path, Oceans Divide, The Living Web, and Panama is the Museum. Panama has a tropical climate with very little seasonal variation, and this supports an abundance of plants with rainforests and grasslands dominating the landscape of the country. Panama's biodiversity is staggering. The country is home to 220 mammal species, 226 species of reptile, 164 amphibian species, and 125 animal species found nowhere else in the world. Panama also boasts 978 avian species, which is the largest number in Central America. This has been our trip to Panama City with its scenic skyscrapers, old town, and views of both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Panama City is easy to get to from anywhere in the world. It is a financial cosmopolitan city that has become a retirement choice for many expats throughout the world because of its consistent year-round temperatures, first-class healthcare, and thriving real estate market. It has a communication infrastructure superior to anywhere else in Latin America, meaning your cell phone calls will go through the first time every time. The fact that it uses the U.S. dollar makes this a great destination for first-timers to Latin America. Being on the U.S. dollar does make many things have similar costs to that within the U.S. and Europe, so don't expect Panama to be really inexpensive. The people are friendly and welcoming. I've had the opportunity to visit Panama City many times over the years, and watching massive ships go through the Miraflores locks never gets old to me. Who knows, maybe you and I will run into each other in Panama City. Casco Viejo is my favorite, and that's where you'll find me. Todos tenemos lugares para ir. Adios, until next time. <laughs>